Dexter's a Springer Spaniel. It's what we call a swimming Spaniel. Gets nice and low, uses his full body weight to pull on the lead. I got asked a question the other day, why does my dog do this? Your dog does this because he feels like it's the quickest way to get from A to B. And we inadvertently taught him that getting low and pulling as hard as he can brings about the desired outcome of forward momentum. The functional reinforcer to pulling on the lead is keep moving forward. So no matter what method you use, whether you use a slip lead and treats, or you use a harness and a clicker, or you use a prong collar or whatever, if you keep moving forward, your dog will still continue to pull. If you still allow that dog to move forward, and the reinforcer of moving forward gets them to the greater reinforcer of maybe getting let off the lead and go into the park, then there's a good chance you'll desensitize whatever you, you're using to try and stop the dog. So, as a rule of thumb today, I am going to get Dex to understand that we only get to move forward once he's walking with me. So I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna try and do this process from start to finish. So I'm gonna get some food and some, and um, probably a slip lead for him. You'll see us use slip leads on quite a lot of dogs because it sits in the right position. It allows us to turn the dog's head. Ironically, allows us to use less force when we're training the dog. I don't wanna go into the discussion about tools and things today. Um, I just want what's best for Dex, so. He's been brought on a harness today. Now, I do use the harness for a number of things, or we do use the harness for a number of things. Uh, typically not loose lead walking. If I let you into a little secret, I don't mind the use of the harness, so long as the dog hasn't learned that he can pull through the harness. But he has a little, big history of reinforcement on this harness. Oh, I'm on then, buddy. Okay, so we're gonna lose, we're gonna ditch the harness. He can pull through it, it harnesses his power. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Everyone's had that harness collar debate, slip lead debate. Uh, we don't need to go into that today. Let's just get him trained. Let's take the pressure out of his shoulders. Biomechanically, him swimming along cannot be good for his physiological development as a young dog. So regardless of what kind of tool we're using, I bet how Dexter looks in the next five minutes will be better for him than how he looked for the last 10, pulling me around on the lead. So he's gonna go over his head, he's gonna go right behind his ears. Good lad, boy Dexter. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Good boy. And that's gonna sit in the right position, which is nice and high above his Adam's apple. We don't want any lead sitting on the track here. Yes, good man. What's he got? And I've just used a fairly high value treat there. Albeit we like using essential food here because we can get more reps in. Again, that's for another video. Good boy, Dext. And I'm just gonna teach him that you can't pull me. I'm gonna teach him where to find reinforcement. I'm gonna break these up into smaller pieces so I can get more reps in. He has um, raw food, so I could use his raw food, but I haven't got my silicone pouch or my rubber gloves. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving and every time he tries to pull me, I'm gonna turn him the other way. Every time he interacts with me, I'm gonna feed him. Not gonna worry about markers or too much in detail of breaking reinforcement. Oh, yeah, good lad. He's a good boy. Okay. And he's not a very greedy dog. Good boy. Ah, ah. There you go, little pull there. Ah, ah. Little pull. Yes, good boy, Dex. Good lad. There he goes. Go this way instead. Good boy, Dex. So what I'm gonna start teaching Dexter is every time he tries to pull me north, then we're going south. There he goes. Ah, ah. And if you notice, I'm waiting just before he hits the end of the lead to turn. Good lad, Dex. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Um, so we want to get to the point, yeah, good lad, that we're using indirect reinforcement instead of luring the dog. 
Yep. If I go too into luring the dog at this point, which means constantly holding the food in front of his nose, um, we'll lose reliability. Uh -huh. Yes, because of my dog will be reliable on the food being there in order to keep him to behave, and aka a, a bribe. Yes. So I'm using the lead and turns in order to get Dexter to behave and then positive reinforcement to reinforce the behavior. But that comes after. Ah, ah. Good boy. We've got a very low distraction environment. We've only got a couple of things going on. There'll never be such thing as a fully sterile environment. But I've not brought any dogs out or any more people out except for the camera lady. Good lad, good lad. And to be honest, stopping a dog pulling on the lead can be quite a stressful process for a dog because of the pulling on the lead is a tool for them that gets them from A to B. So losing that tool, something that has worked for so long, can be, good boy Dex, a stressful process. Shut up there and I'm going this way again. So I'm going to try and do this with my hips square so you can kind of see a little bit better so I'm not turning my back on the camera so much. Good lad. Good boy. Good lad. And as you can see, good lad. Good boy. He's a little bit everywhere. Good boy, Dex. Good man. You handsome? Yeah. You handsome? Hey. So again, this is the first... 10 minutes of working with Dex and he's got this nice silky coat that's making that lead fall down. So up, up. There he goes, try to pull me. We're going this way. So I'm kind of using his choices against him. Uh -uh. But as you can see, his tail stayed up this whole time. Uh -uh. I'm not abusing him by putting a slip lead on him. Good boy. He's pretty happy. Good lad, Dex. Good boy, yes. Good lad. And already he's looking a bit calmer. He's stop panting. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Good lad. Oh, he's a clever clogs. He is a clever boy. <clears throat> Not using markers just yet. You'll maybe hear me say yes or something. I just want to teach him how to turn that lead pressure off and where to find reinforcement. I'm basically telling Dexter, you're never gonna find what you want on the end of that lead, but you will find what you want interacting with my end of the lead, or me. Good boy, Dex. We might see a little bit of frustration out of Dexter here, just because of, you know, he enjoys pulling on that lead. Dogs do things because they want to and because they find value in it, so. So I'm going to spend another five, ten minutes doing this sort of stuff with Dexter. Lots of turns, lots of turns, lots of reinforcement when he interacts with me. I hope that's answered a couple of questions as to why dogs pull and how to combat it. Loads of different methods to um, address pulling. A lot of them do work, but people are just inconsistent, so. We use a little trick using two different pieces of equipment. You can't give everything away for free. So, yeah, anyway. Just spend another 10 minutes, just like always, and then pop in for a nap, and then we'll repeat with a different member of staff, staff later, so Dex gets used to being handled by multiple people, making things easier for his owner when she comes to collect him in two, three days' time. Good boy. Good lad. <laughs>